Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Cheryl, for your kind introduction. Um, it's my great honor to be here today. Um, I'm going to tell you about the recent development and global strategy of Korean broadcast industry, especially based on my company, NBC. Mm. Um, today, I'll cover these topics, uh, Korean media landscape snapshot and hot program trends in Korea and online distribution model and global, globalization approach. First, let me tell you a little bit about my company. My company, Munhwa Broadcasting Corporation. Munhwa means culture. Um, it was established 1961. And so it's a 51-year-old company. We have one terrestrial television channel and three radio channel and five cable channels. And let's look at Korea media landscape snapshot. We have 50 million population in Korea and 22 million TV household. And we have 97% uh, of broadband penetration, one of the, the highest in the world. And smartphone subscribers are 30 million. And there are three major terrestrial channels in Korea and more than 100 cable channels. And total broadcast revenue for last year was 10.2 billion US dollars. Um, first, let me introduce, let me start the K-pop worldwide success story. I think this guy, um, Sai, he got an ugly face and poor body shape for an entertainer. But his Korean lyric song, Gangnam Style, gained 850 million views on YouTube. So he became the king of the YouTube. And um, it means uh, local stars can be a global star. I think at this time of the day, after lunch, you feel sleepy. So I will play Gangnam Style <laughs> for dancing. And let's stay away. Yeah, did you enjoy the dance? Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Let's look at hot program trends in Korea. These are top 20 channels in Korea. Um, there are the yellow ones, they are terrestrial channels, they are very strong. And the red ones are 24 hour news channels. And blue one, they are drama channels. They are normally rebroadcast of the terrestrial dramas. And the green, they are movie channels, mostly uh, Hollywood movies. And especially the, the 19, Tuniverse is uh, animation for children movies. And let's look at top 20 programs. With this chart, we can find which programs are hot in Korea. There are, most of, most of the chart is uh, full of yellow ones. They are all dramas. Dramas are very strong in Korea. And one red, it's a comedy show. And one, the gray one, it's a KBS, it's a news, nine o'clock evening news. And two green, they are reality shows. I think the, the dramas are very strong, and most of the dramas are, um, I'll detail, give it detailed explanation later. Um, this is top 10 drama list. Among dramas, the pink one, it's uh, history dramas. 
And moon embracing the sun is the number one this year. And the tree with deep roots is from SBS. It's also history drama. And the yellow ones, they are family dramas. Um, I think in the past, the trend dramas, which is targeted for young audiences, were was very popular in Korea. But nowadays, young women abandon the TV. So we emphasize a little bit old targeted um, dramas, which, is, uh, which are history and family dramas. <clears throat> I'll give you more explanation about these dramas. Moon Embracing the Sun, it's uh, the, the biggest hit this year. The rating was Average rating was 36.5, and it's a 10 p.m. drama, Wednesday and Thursday. It's a costume drama, and it appeals to the old ages. I mean, the costume drama is very expensive compared to modern dramas, and we cannot put product placement in these history dramas, so it means a little profit for us. But this is the opposite story. It's uh, air produced by KBS, our competitor. Um, my husband got a family. It is uh, Saturday and Sunday, 8 p.m. dramas. Its rating is a little bit lower than ours, at 34. It's a happy ending story and family-oriented dramas. It also appeals to the old ages, but it's modern dramas. It means low cost. And they put PPLs in the dramas, so they made a big money. And this is top 10 reality and comedy programs. Among 10 titles, there are one comedy and seven reality shows and one, uh, two talk shows. Um, I mean, I think the, the reality show is basically non-scripted. So there is little cost on the script. But we use more than 20 or 30 cameras to produce these kind of the reality shows. Um, compared to the script, camera, camera crew is uh, very cheap. So they use the lots of, lots of number of cameras. And also the, the, the um, using of the non-linear editing make it made these things possible. Without non-linear editing, we cannot produce this kind of the reality shows. Because more than 20 cameras are using and they are, are, are edited later, it makes very good programs. Um, next, I want to tell you a very interesting trend, three kind of interesting trend in Korean dramas these days. The first one is the foreign stars come to Korea. Um, Fuji Mina and Yoshitaka Yuriko, they are all Japanese actresses. They appear on Korean dramas. Um, I think it signals the influx of Japanese money is coming into Korean drama fund. And also Chinese and Hollywood fund is knocking the door. They want to um, invest in Korean dramas. Second, foreign cities come into Korean dramas. Um, we call it destination marketing. Um, for the international cities, um, the exposure to Korean TV dramas attract Asian tourists because our Korean programs exported to Asian countries. And also for the, our production side, um, foreign city is a very good attraction, appealing factor to Korean audiences. So, so it's a kind of a winning situation. I think the, the drama, ba Boys Over Flowers, is a very popular drama. It was a perfect example. Um, it was shot in New Caledonia. It's a, the southern Pacific island. Um, it's far from Korea, but after the show was very popular in Korea, the New Caledonia became the best honeymoon place for the Koreans. So nowadays, lots of the 
and foreign tourism bureaus are trying to put their cities in Korean dramas. Hong Kong, Macau, Okinawa, and Hokkaido. And last but not the least, the PPLs are popular in Korea. Um, PPL is putting the brands in the programs, and it's a very effective advertising method. And dramas are really basically big budget project, but we are always lack of funds, so we want to um, put, we want to invite the PPLs. And also, Korea government um, legalized PPL last year. So we are very um, aggressive on inviting the PPL. But the problem is the history dramas are so strong, but it's hard to insert PPL. So now PPL changed the stories. I have two examples here. The first one, Dr. Jin, it's a remake of a Japanese drama. In this case, modern doctor slips 100 years back to the historic past. And this is a Lupta Prince. In this drama, historic prince travels 300 years future into modern times. So we put some kind of PPLs, these two dramas. And let's look at new distribution method. I think nowadays, people are away from at-home TV. I think there are three reasons. Penetration of broadband and mobile is very high, especially in Korea. Um, and the increase of working women, they have very little time to watch TV on the um, real time. And third one is a catch-up capability of mobile and IPTV made this situation. So at the, these days, the real-time at-home TV watching is down. And any time, any place, video consuming is up. I think there are three types of um, shift here. The first one is time shift. Record now and watch later. And play shift. They no more watch TV at home, they are watching TVs outdoors, in the cars, in the subways, and schools and offices. With a PC, they watch TV uh, programs on PCs, offices. And the device shift. They watch programs, I mean, they consume programs on TV, on PC, and on mobile. And also, there are lots of people are doing the social videos consuming, social consuming, social media consuming. While they're watching programs, they communicate and they exchange ideas on the mobile through Twitter and Facebook. So um, especially after the introduction of internet, people went to personal computers and mobile. And to serve these people, MBC made out-of-home program consumption easy. So we started the website 2000, and we started paid st streaming service um, 2003. And we started download-to-own service 2006. And last year, we started high-quality service. It's a real-time streaming. 5K and 1 mega, two, two, two quality, and VOD, video on demand, and download. And we started a single pricing with uh, um, around 0.6% six six US dollar per episode. These lists are um, NBC's VOD sales top 10 list. Good rating means good sales, too. And we also, to serve the three-screen market, we started paid three-screen service. It's a joint venture of the two major terrestrial companies in Korea, my company, NBC, and SBS. We started joint venture um, this year. Um, we served 32 live TV 
and four radio channels on this PUC service. The monthly rate is um, 4.45 US dollars per month. We launched, we launched this service um, this year, July 23rd, and we got 1 million plus subscribers. Um, and 65% of subscribers are 20s and 30s, they're young people. And paid service conversion rate is 8%. They are, they are saying it's a very, very high rate. And we also going to global market. As I mentioned, um, size Gangnam style case, YouTube is a very good vehicle to reach global consumers. We started this service January this year. We have 9,000 plus hours video and 90,000 plus clips. And we got cumulative 250 million plus hits. And we are sharing the money with the YouTube. There are five channels, NBC, World, NBC Classic, NBC Drama, and K-pop and entertainment. And when we go to global market, the language is the biggest barrier. But Biki.com became a very powerful tool for us. Biki.com is, uh, they are using uh, um, volunteer subtitling. So, you can go to this site, and it's a, they show global primetime TV, movies, and music videos in 150 plus languages. All of the languages are subtitled. It's a volunteer. It's a free. And finally, we started um, global format sales. There are two kinds of format sales. The first one is a drama script. We sold. Um, Coffee Prince and My Lovely Samson, it's a very famous drama series. We sold it to Philippines, the, the station GMA. And also we, um, we have a program format sales. Just Married, we sold it to Turkey, um, Show TV. And we are still discussing with the China, I'm a singer. It's a very big hit um, reality shows in Korea. And finally, I want, I, I want to show you NBC's new drama, The King's Doctor trailer. Thank you so much. What a great um, drama that was and a great presentation that was. Thank you so much. But um, yeah, actually, there's some information that was covered uh, are very interesting in the sense that I didn't know. I've been covering Korean market for ages. And, and yet, so something like YouTube, you know, what they're doing with YouTube and some other websites, that's most interesting. So, Mr. Han, can I just ask you? Um, uh, how do you, I mean, most, I think, broadcast officers in Asia would look at YouTube as a kind of a, threat or piracy? I mean, how do you use YouTube as another form of platform? What benefit do you have? I think um, for the first time, we also um, think about it's a very um, kind, kind of cannibalization for our ratings. Right. But when we want to go to going to global, mm -hmm. I think YouTube is the best tools to reach the international audiences, international consumers. And my company is, is also trying to um, experiment, do way of distribute our programs 
around Korea and into the international market. So we um, aggressively started to use um, YouTube. So you don't really look at that as a um, clash to your international distribution sales, nothing like that. I mean, mm. I would thought that you know because of our international sales arms, uh, you know this YouTube will be definitely a clash or will prevent us from moving forwards, providing better uh, you know opportunity for our clients. But that's not how you look at YouTube. Yes. And you actually also make money through this. Yes. Um, we have uh, two kind of the dramas, I mean, the classic yep. and YouTube world. It's uh, basically YouTube world we are using as a kind of the um, um, promotional tools. But, and also we put the um, advertising on YouTube and we get some um, minimum guarantee plus we, after we get some uh, bills, we get some extra money. So basically, we earn a little bit of money. Without we are using YouTube, we can, cannot, cannot get that money. But with right. using the YouTube, we can get the international sales and we get the money from the, all of the world. Right, okay. Um, I think, uh you know, uh, some of the new media part that you actually touched on. I mean, how, um, how much of overall revenue uh, are, consists from the new media sector for MBC? Um, I think um, at the moment, the, the revenues from new media is very little. But uh -huh. I think this, sometime in the future, because the Korea is a, the broadband penetration is very, very high. Right. And that's why some, some changes will be happening in the market. So we cannot ignore that market. I'll give a very interesting um, story in Korea. Uh, in the little past, there was a no ancillary market for mm -hmm. the um, movies. I mean, because there, there are too much the, um, piracy. There was no DVD market in Korea in the past. But last two years, some, because of the high penetration of um, broadband, broadband yep. nowadays lots of Korean people watch movies, not going to the um, movie house. They are watch movies on the internet, VOD. So the revenues from the VOD is picking, picking up. And sometime in the future, nearly one or two years later, we expect almost half and half. It's another big revenue for the um, ancillary market. Right, yes. right. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, what, I mean, oh, I think another one about co-production. I think a lot of people are, whenever I go to different markets in Asia, we all talk about co-production. How can we better produce? How can, is there more money when you create bigger or larger, you know, uh, co-production drama or mm -hmm. whatnot. Uh, what's your view on that? I mean, I know you have done some uh, co-production with Japan and China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what's your plan on that? Do you want to do more co-production? And if so, wh what are the cases where you look into that? I think we tried many times to co-produce with Japan and China. Right. But our experience was all of them were failure because um, failure in a sense that is the rating wasn't good or failure in a sense that I mean that the, the rating was yeah. rating was not good yes and the profit was not good <laughs> yes. because Ratings i think the, the, the really reason why reflects. i think the reason yeah. because especially asian people try to put their own their own um, idea, ideology in the in the programs but i think the the culture and the, the nuances are a little bit different between country by country. China and Japan and, and Korea, they're a little different, the cultural background. So I think the most important thing is one party have the total editorial control I about the old true. issues. Yes. And we can invite the monies from other side. But in any case, the editorial control controlled by one Partner is very important. 
Actually, that's a very good point because uh, I, we had a similar uh, experience at ITV as well. When we're doing Titanic, for instance, which you know Germany came, France, uh, France mm -hmm. came, we just got their money basically because it was a huge production. But you're right; that's the one thing that we will not, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, will not give up. So, okay. Um, so I mean, as you can see, the Korean, you know, um, drama has been doing so well all over Asia and. It's to a certain extent, America and Europe. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think, you know, is, uh, what is the key element for success in Korean drama? Um, I think there are maybe around about four reasons. I, I think the first one is the, the, the very severe domestic competition in Korean market. For example, um, my company, NBC, we produce um, around, um, 10, uh, 1,000 minutes per week dramas. Right. So there are three terrestrial channels in Korea. They fighting each other every week. So se severe domestic competition is make our program strong. I right. think and the second thing is uh, the freedom of, freedom of expression. Um, I think last 20 years after our um, civilian government started 20 years ago, um, we can make any kind of programs, any kind of dramas. There is no limit on the um, themes of our dramas. So I think it's very important. Right. And third one is a channel explosion in the international market. I think in the past there was only one uh, terrestrial only, but right. after the technological development, there is a cable, satellite, internet. They need lots of content. Right. Right at the time, the reasonable priced Korean dramas was there. I think it's a very good um, situation right. to export our programs. And the last one is uh, um, Asian values. I think Korean dramas um, deal with the um, respect for the elders right. and the we emphasize family values. And this kind of the, the Korean dramas uh, um, covers the Asian values. These four um, reasons is, uh, I think, the, the basic reason why Korean dramas are so strong in the world. Right. Um, actually, when I go to the market and talk to people, people kind of ask, a lot of broadcasters in fact ask me, you know, believe it or not, Korean broke dramas are very, very expensive to buy. Mm -hmm. And I, I get it. I mean, I understand that your uh, production cost is very high, it's going up, and the celebrities are, you know, becoming more and more expensive. But are you making money at the end of the day? I mean, I know you said a drama, you know, out of that 20 list that you had of top, top rating um, title, 80% was uh, old drama. So are you making money through that or are you not making money? What, what's, what's going on? I think um, some dramas make money and some dramas <laughs> lose money. <laughs> because um, the main revenue for broadcasters in Korea is advertising. Right. But these days, the advertising is... Uh, we are experiencing five year consecutive decreasing the advertising money. Right. That's why Korean government started legalize the product placement. Right. Um, with the product placement, we can invite the advertisers come to Korean dramas and we can make a, um, a re decent programs mm -hmm. with uh, um, funded by the another revenue stream, advertising and product placement. Right. So we are trying to find a um, new way of funding money to produce dramas. That's why we invite the foreign cities to right. um, put in our programs, our dramas, and we invite foreign funding. Right. We do everything to increase the revenue. And we also trying to decrease the cost, right. the, cut the cost. Uh, I think the biggest budget for the Korean dramas are um, script, I mean writers and the, the actors and actresses. So we are trying to um, get the um, 
talented new writers, not very cheap writers. And we want to try to experiment with the um, low budget, the new face talent. Right, right. Thank you for that. Okay, so last question. So, I mean, I get this a lot. I mean, um, wherever I travel, a lot of broadcasters ask me, okay, so, you know, ITV is a, the largest commercial broadcaster in the UK. Uh, what's, I mean, and the market at the moment, everywhere in, everywhere in Asia and Europe, TV markets are becoming tougher and tougher. There's more competition and the TV advertisement uh, market is going down. So they always ask me, how, what's your strategy for, for moving forward? Actually, I mean, we do have a strategy, but you know, I don't know whether that's a necessarily the same one as in, in Asia. But what's your strategy for next three to five? What's your focus next three to five years? What areas would mm -hmm. you be focusing on? I think there are three reasons that the changing the market. The first one is the demographic change. Right. And the second one is the technological development. Right. And the third one is uh, um, regulation change from the government. Right. And what regulation are you talking about? What I mean, for example, to? government, the Korean government regula um, deregulated the product placement right. in the dramas. Yeah. And in Korea, we cannot put the commercial in the middle of the program. We call it the mid roll. Right. We cannot put it mid roll yes. in Korea. Yeah. But if the government changed that regulation, yeah. we can get more money from the advertising money. But at now, we can do that. So we are trying to um, the re the persuade government re deregulate the, right. the advertising regulation. Right. And also, if the the technological development, we want to accept that development, and we are going to um, internet, we are going to the um, mobile. We put our programs to on the internet, on the mobile, and that makes our audiences, our consumers, easy to access our programs. Right. That will increase the revenue for us. Right. And also, we are going to more global market because um, we are trying to start the new channels in America with the uh, um, Korean content, with the Chinese content altogether. And right. there are lots of the Korean and Chinese and Asian, there's lots of Asian audience in the US. We are trying to cover that market with strong Korean content, with the Chinese content. Right. We put them, dub into Chinese and dub into um, Philippines, and then we're showing to the Asian audience in the U.S. market. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. An. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.